Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hello, everybody. My name is Min, and I'm your host from NDIS Property Australia, and you're listening to the SDA Housing Podcast, a show that explains, highlights, guides, and brings awareness about all things SDA in this ever-changing NDIS world. Today, we have a special repeat guest speaker, and that is David Whitelaw from Adapt Housing. David, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Min. Thanks for the opportunity again. So here we are in July 2023, and there's been a lot of changes that have taken place the last few weeks. And the three topics we're covering today are the new price guide by the NDIS for SDA purposes, the impact of all this, and also your next 12 months. So, David, take it away. Yeah, the last couple of weeks have been interesting since we've had a release of the new price guide. And uh, and there were lots of changes that we weren't expecting. A lot of those changes were a bit unusual, but we can see the positive impact that they're going to have on providing people with, uh, with really wonderful housing solutions. What has your team in Brisbane here... What's been their feedback regarding all these changes in the NDS price guide? Certainly the, the biggest impact was that a level of funding went down. It certainly wasn't expected um, and not quite sure if it was in the rules or, or not. But when we saw a reduction in apartment high physical support, it was a bit of a shock to the system. Um, and for those uh, organisations who are seeing some vacancy in those developments, a way of being able to support that is to look at other participants in other design categories and maybe even some build types as well to be able to have the opportunity to access some of those apartments. For example, improved availability apartment, fully accessible apartment funding rose substantially, which will give investors and developers an opportunity to look at those additional funds and to see if it works financially and commercially for them. Have you seen many developments in the last two years that were purely improved livability apartments at all? I have, and we've got some wonderful improved livability developments, in particular the ones in Chermside, that uh, were retrofitted firstly, and um, and another building next door in Playfield Street are purpose-built improved livability apartments. And when we talked to the developer, we've uh, we've looked at that development and said, Let's see if we can bring in some fully accessible and high physical support features to maybe provide some flexibility for participants who do have shared funding in, in those other design categories that could access the improved livability apartments. We've also got a, a couple of developments, um, or one in particular in Logan Home, that's also improved livability. The other thing with improved livability we, we see, and we have a lot of villa developments throughout Australia, southeast Queensland, or from Cairns down to, say, Coffs Harbour at the moment. And uh, and when we talk to developers about these villa developments, we, we, we like to see if we can support improved livability and fully accessible um, in those conversations because we do know that there is a need out there and, uh, and we like to support the whole industry, not just one sector. When would a developer consider doing villas for improved livability? Because the way we see it is we see a lot of people talking about robust villas in a four pack and six pack and whatnot, but it's it's rare to hear someone say I'm designing and building IL villas. Is that correct or not? It is. It, it, actually, prior prior to the first of July twenty three, there wasn't a lot of discussions. How we would look at it is that we would be able to put in and and support the development of some improved livability villas amongst other uh, fully accessible and high physical support villas. Our model is to support one provider over a project and that one provider to get a a mix of participants and uh, tenancy matching uh, opportunities to to come from uh, improved livability, fully accessible and high physical support. Prior to the, sorry, post uh, 1st of July 23, now developers are saying, David, why don't I just build to improve livability? and have some uh, fully accessible features that we can 
still provide flexibility. So more and more conversations are coming about uh, improved livability villa developments. Gotcha. That's good to hear. So the, what's the impact of all these SDA price changes? I mean, the government has made these changes uh, affecting decrease of HPS SDA funding to lower the, the attractiveness, obviously. But where do you see the next year or two years, the marketplace itself with regards to SDA dwelling rollouts from builders and developers? Yeah, so at, at, at the moment, that, that some of the major changes are the fact that improved livability, fully accessible apartment funding has increased. What has also increased dramatically is improved livability, fully accessible house funding has also increased dramatically. And, uh, and I, I think NDIS has been very, very, NDIA, I should say, has been very strategic in, in increasing those to fill vacancies that exist at the moment in those two areas but also to encourage developers and investors to, to reconsider a, a good financial um, and commercial opportunity for improved livability and fully accessible. So we, we're going to see an increase, I think, in those developments over the next 12 to 18 months. Gotcha. About a year ago, I spoke to one of your staff members, Dante, and we talked about filling up these so-called empty HPSs around Brisbane. And he said that it's hard to find these IL participants. Is it because they've never been sought after and chased down by providers and investors? That that's why they're not coming out of the out of the woods. What, what's your opinion about where they are? Are they all in legacy homes? Where are they? If they're the majority of the marketplace, they should be everywhere at the moment. So that there's a very clinical response about improved livability participants and their approval, and there's a very clinical uh, approval for for robust and high physical support. We've we've been an active SDA provider for a number of years, and um, for someone, and we still get phone calls from from participants saying, "David, I'm in a chair. Am I eligible for SDA?" And so, getting a high physical support of fun, uh, high physical support funding, it wasn't easy, but but we could justify why we needed specialist accommodation for robust. We could an OT and a support coordinator and an SDA provider could justify why someone with robust needed robust. Improved livability is different. Someone with cognitive, intellectual, sensory impairment is the clinical phrase. How do you justify getting SDA into plans? It's a, it's a lot harder. And now that we've supported participants with HPS, supported participants with robust, we need to now go through uh, some new learnings, uh, some, some new education, and support support coordinators understanding what's required to get SDA improve livability. And so there's a, there's a whole new training session now because many, many SIL providers or care providers would have participants that would be eligible. We just need to say, hey, here's an opportunity of having a specialist accommodation to support them. So you're saying it goes back to the SIL providers, support coordinators in identifying that opportunity for the participant to then move forward with applications to the to the agency, is that right? Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's a, it's about understanding what the requirements are to get approval, what what you need to to provide to the NDIS to, to seek that SDA approval. Yeah. Has that been pretty weak the last two, three years because of lack of knowledge and experience by OTs and providers? Yeah, we're we're seeing support coordinators and now become very knowledgeable. And uh, and very being be very supported too by uh, someone like SDA Services, uh, who is fantastic in this field. They're just incredible. They they provide great service and they provide great knowledge. And they're also very comfortable in sharing that knowledge and trying to uh, provide support coordinators with the tools they need to help participants get SDA into plans. So we're just starting to see now support coordinators becoming more knowledgeable, more confident and having the tools required to support participants getting uh, SDA into plans. Gotcha. I think with all the initiatives from the NDIS and better experiences from support coordinators, the uh, the awareness for investors of how strong the IL category is now, I think we'll see uh, definitely a lot more IL product, IL approvals, IL awareness in the marketplace for the next few years from now on, I guess. I would uh, would agree, absolutely. It'll be interesting to see sort of what what plays out, and for and, and it becomes viable for for participant, uh, sorry, for investors uh, and developers who have built um, other 
uh, other product, whether it be houses or villas or apartments, that there's a real opportunity for participants to to look at those current developments that maybe have some vacancies or in great locations. We're, we're going to see some of those vacancies. Sure, sure. Speaking of ne- of uh, great locations, um, the next twelve months, where do you see your organisation expanding, growing into, and, and and being part of around Australia? Well, we've we've taken the last few years to really get things right in Queensland, and uh, we've got lots of apartments and villas and houses, and yeah, throughout southeast Queensland, from the Gold Coast up uh, to Cairns, and uh, we've always had some developments in New, uh, northern New South Wales as well. We've just expanded now. We've just opened up our first development in Tamworth, and we've got some great contacts in Tamworth. And so we've now opened up at Dubbo, at Tamworth, Armidale, Inverell, Moree, that northern Tablelands area. And we've got a few developments in Coffs Harbour, and we're also active in Newcastle there as well. So we've expanded from Queensland into northern New South Wales. Um, I'm very excited to, to say that we're now active um, in the Northern Territory. Um, we've got some wonderful projects that are current uh, in, in Darwin. We've got some great future projects in Darwin, villa developments, uh, side-by-side houses in great locations. Um, and uh, we're probably about six weeks away from opening up our first uh, villa development in Alice Springs. We've got some, some great builders. We're working very closely with LWB, Life Without Barriers, around that development and um, we're only, I think it's about five or six weeks away from completion. And riding on the, on the wave of that wonderful development, there's about three or four other developments in Alice Springs uh, at, as well. So Northern Territory is another opportunity for us. Uh, New South Wales, of course, is expanding rapidly. And I, I hope to, uh, to provide wonderful housing opportunities in, in Victoria um, in the next uh, 12 months as well. Wow. You guys really are growing, aren't you? And again, as I said, uh, our, our model works. We're, we're just SDA providers. We're not, we don't do anything else but just do the SDA. We don't sell SDA. We don't do project management, architecture work. We don't do SIL. We understand all those components and we know them quite well how it all works and we've got to have knowledge. But effectively, at the end of the day, the only thing that we do is SDA and we do it well. You say that as if there's an underlying tone behind those words, we do nothing else. What, what are you seeing out there in the marketplace that, that makes you differentiate and, and you staying in your own lane that, that makes you guys more or more appropriate and more easy to deal with that? Uh, look, there are other SDA providers that, um, that do project management, that do their own developments. There are other SDA providers that are different to us. Uh, we're, we're, all, we're all different. We're all different uh, agreements and different structures and different processes. And um, our, our focus has always been just do SDA and just do it well. But as I said, other, other SDA providers like to control it a, a, a lot more and have their own developments. And having that, that, that level of control, it means that they're going to get great product as well. But our core focus has been to support uh, and, and uh, work with providers who have great locations, who are capable of putting really good builds together and, uh, and cater for the needs of participants, I, I guess, um, in, in better locations than what maybe other project managers can do. Mm. Our opinion, David, is there's no such thing as a perfect SDA provider because not, ev- not every SDA provider knows everyone in the system. They, they can't service every location in Australia and they, they just run differently. So you know, each to their own. Resources and geographic location is, is a challenge in this market. You can't be everywhere all the time on every aspect, every product out there. So I guess you, know, you guys being based in Brisbane and growing, having grown organically the last three to four years, you're doing it slowly and, and efficiently and commercially. That's the important thing. And you guys have a good brand and you, know, you can't always fill every product out there. We know that. But at least you, know, you, have a good, you guys have a good brand out there, Adapt Housing. And um, it's good to see that there are other, your peers in the marketplace who are, who are just, just, just as a, a good a service out there. But again, every investor or every stakeholder out there should really do their homework when it comes to working with the appropriate professional services like yours to ensure that they're comfortable with what's being delivered on hand because you can't always have the best price or the best service or the best locations. You have what you have and you just go from there. Isn't that right, David? Yeah, it's uh, and appreciate the, the level of confidence in us too. And we do 
have created forever homes uh, for, for, for people with SDA and their plans, and we've created life-changing experiences, but we also have not been able to cater for everybody. And it's disappointing. It's disappointing to do that. And we keep working towards it, and we keep working towards it. And I'll give you a couple of examples. About, and I'll go three and a half, four years ago, we tried to put a project, so we would try to support a project in the Redland Bay area. Uh, and it was a robust uh, duplex, triplex villa development that we tried to do. Couldn't find the right location, couldn't, you know, we didn't have any developments down there. It just it was a really difficult one to be able to do because it needed a lot of things to come together. Um, we've had a developer come to us recently and identify a site, put a, a design together. I've, I've shared it with some close families that I've worked with over the last couple of years. And, uh, and I believe that we're just about to be uh, sign off on, the, on that development. And, uh, and I think it will start construction in the next maybe eight weeks. And that's been a project that's been a long time in the making. That's, we, we're probably going, probably going at maybe three and a half to four years of, um, of that project. That's just a, a long, long project. Do you find that uh, participants and their families do have the patience to wait that long? Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. It's hard. A lot of families that I that I work with, you know, do find it difficult. They're always looking for solutions, and um, and if if they approach us and we don't have the development, we've always we've we've got very good systems and processes that if that opportunity does arise, and then we can go back and 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 support that that family. And in in most situations, if we're not able to to support the development, then other SDA providers are not able to do it as well. Um, and when you get a solution, you just you just grab hold it and you run with it. And uh, and as I said, I, I think this one's going to be a wonderful project. Well, that's good to hear, David. We, we look forward to hearing more good stories coming out in the marketplace like this to, uh, to hear the wonderful uh, impact that SDA providers like Adapt Housing are doing in the marketplace. Any final words of advice from your organisation or you as CEO of Adapt Housing? To our listeners who are investors who are thinking about investing in NDIS or SDA, in light of all the changes and the new rules and the opportunities here, any words of advice that you have as an SDA provider to our listeners as to how sh- they should move forward from here with regards to putting their foot in the water? Yeah, look, a, a, a lot of the product that's coming out at the moment, it's great. It's, it's great, you know, builds, that, you know, and a lot of people are thinking about having a point of difference, you know, whether it's technology, whether it's... Um, you know, power windows and doors. You know, having that in the in the build that might even be a, a hydrotherapy pool, or it might be an outdoor uh, area that you can have barbecues in in a you know larger development. I, I think it's really important to think about location. Location, I, I think, is the key factor. It's about making sure that you're close to amenities. You're you're close to hospitals and shopping centres and transport. They're, they're some of the key factors. Um, I, I think probably just be aware of of saturation in certain areas. That would be my concern. Is, is that um, you know the build might be a great build, it might be a great location, but if there are fifteen other builds in that that one street, then that makes it a little bit tough on on the investor and developer to for it to be commercial. As a provider, can you log into the portal to see registered designs that have been assessed in a certain suburb to see the the pipeline volume coming through. Can you see that? Yeah, we we, we provide information to the NDIS. Uh, all our developments are pre-registered with the NDIS, and that data you can you can buy that data off whether it be Housing Hub or you know um, a few other different providers. Um, but you can also have a look at SDA Finder is an NDIS website that's quite good, just to give you a bit of an idea where that product is and see if there's any other builds um, located within the area. Those resources are showing built product empty or under construction. I'm talking about data in the system, pipeline, pipeline. Are you saying you, I thought only providers could see that, if, if at all? And that's really a survey. That's really no. So, so we provide data to the to the uh, NDIS through Housing Hub, um, and there are 88. I, I believe the last report that we gave, there are 88 providers who provided data. Uh, not all not all SDA providers provide data. But there are most of the big ones, and most of the the major SDA providers provide data to the NDIS, yeah, through housing. But that's still only a sample, correct? Yeah. You can go to SDA Finder and and um, 
and change change the search to all product, and you will see most existing builds um, in in that area. You'll also see vacancy certainly, but you'll see most product in there. But you still SDA providers still have to upload that information onto the system. Yeah, yeah. So the point is, the system is still not perfect. They're they're working towards it, and as I said, we've seen lots and lots of positive changes over the last few years, uh, and uh, and I think we'll con- continue to see those positive changes come forward. Gotcha, David. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. It's always a, a, a wonderful time to sit down with you to get, to get your learned experiences in the marketplace of SDA at the moment. When we when we meet next time in the next month or two months, what should our topic be next time? Do you think? Well, we'll say a little bit more direction about what's happening with the new price guide. As I said, it's very much data-driven. I think there's a lot of positive uh, aspects that have come out of that, and we'll get a bit more knowledge because we've also got um, what we call Appendix H in the price guide, and that's supporting participants living with a partner, uh, living with a friend, um, living with a a husband or wife um, in in an SDA property, in a house, for example. We're, We're actually going to start to see some changes, some positive changes come from Appendix H, which was the old Appendix G. So, is there much change between the G and the new H? No, the um, the theory is still the same, but instead of creating a formula, they've created a table. But it's it's just how we get to support participants who would like to live in a house with a partner or a friend or or someone that doesn't have SDA in their plan. It's it's about how we get to that space and how we support those participants. Gotcha, David. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Thank Bye-bye. you for the opportunity. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.